All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here for Smirking Gun Reviews. Me, I am Smirking Gun Reviews, so whatever. <laughs> um, so I've made a few personal videos over the last couple of years. Not many, not many. Um, mostly pretty recently. I, I did one a while back, a while back now, uh, talking about my problems that I had uh, with the booze. And you can find that on here. And we get pretty personal. And we've had, you know, like some updates and things like that where we talk about stuff. And, you know, we just recently did the Chadwick Bozeman thing. And I'm pretty upfront with people and I'm pretty, I feel like I'm pretty honest with people in my reviews. But we're trying to be entertaining. We try, I try to put as much realness out there as I can, as much as myself out there. I don't feel like enough people, uh, I, you know, how people want to review however they want to review. How I like to review is I like to really bring myself into it. And, and try to be like a, just a, a, a lot. More than just a review is what I'm saying. And we have a lot of fun. And wherever you go to watch reviews, you know, a lot, you know, some people are just real clinical, which is fine. Some people just give you like, this is the director, this is the writer, this is the pacing. And that's fine too. If you watch it, it's fine. Um, but I, I, I really try to bring something more, which is just, you know, a personality. I feel like a lot of videos don't have a lot of personality and whether you like me or not that's you know it's all you know subjective but I don't get too far into certain things um but it comes out every once in a while if you've ever seen my Handmaid's Tale reviews especially like the first couple of seasons and and when it's when I when I'm really fired up I'll get really fired up and and real like uh straight up like brutally honest about what I think is happening and I'll I'll attack a few things that I go after something that I feel like is wrong like in the world <laughs> and I'll, I've done it you know on Watchmen and I'm doing it right now on Lovecraft Country because it's a reflection of not just uh, you know society a lot of these things that we watch right now are all huge reflections on our on our society, but we still kind of keep it entertaining. We still kind of keep it light. And everybody out there, right? Unless you are a political channel or an activist channel, the majority of people that make these kind of videos that are about shows and games and comics and movies, we keep all that stuff separate. For the most part. I feel like I try to broach those subjects with honesty. And, but I still kind of hold back. Especially when it comes to like political stuff. And you know going into 2020. Um, I'm going to play you guys something here. <laughs> um, when 2020 started. For me. It started off great it started off like clear sailing i was the first couple of months it seemed pretty good despite the rumblings that i was hearing about this covid19 thing and then from there on out everything kind of went for a lot of people i know a few people in my kind of that travel in my circles that we're having a bad time right up the get right out of the gate and it, and it's not let up at all. But this is what I feel like 2020 is in a nutshell for me. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. This is the greatest thrill of my life. I'm king of the world. Woohoo! Woohoo! I Now, 
just to be clear, um, that's about as entertaining as this video is going to get. <laughs> because it's, like I said, at first it started out great. thought, oh man, this is great. And then it went downhill from there. And literally felt like that. To be even more clear, the moment he gets in the ambulance was me skydiving this year a couple, uh, about a month ago. Just over a month ago. The ambulance hitting the tree was Chadwick Boseman dying. <laughs> and going all the way down to where we are now, right now, September 1st, 2020. And so this is where we really, I have some things I need to get off my chest. Because as much fun as we have here, as much fun as I love talking about the things uh, that we talk about here, and I love so much, one of the main tenets of this channel is to make connections with people, talk to you guys. Because again, you know, like I think a lot of YouTubers forget, they say we, they love their audience, but they don't really do too much interacting with them. Not, not to this level, unless you do super chats where you pay money to get people to pay attention to you for a couple of seconds. And maybe not even that in some cases. So talking to you guys is one of the huge benefits, whether it's for good or for ill, you guys want to call me out on things. I love, you know, when you give me extra information, all that stuff, you want to encourage me and all, whatever, all that is good. But I need to talk about the realness of this is that most people here were not, they don't use the platform. They just, they use the platform to further their ends on YouTube, which is fine. It's your choice. Everybody has it, right? You, everybody has the choice of what, how, they, how to use this platform, including myself for years. We've now like, sometimes we get personal, I get personal, but most of people, if their channel is about reviews, they just do reviews If they're, you know, like, and I'm not making, I'm not uh, going to diss any channel. Like, I'll, but I'm going to mention a few just because, like, like channel, like, awesome, right? Whether you like them or hate them. Like, they're, they do nostalgia type of stuff. They don't, they don't make videos that are really topical. They do nostalgia stuff, you know. We, I, you got uh, Red Letter Media, who's my favorites, you know. They might, they, they, they like to poke fun at the world while they do their reviews. They, they do kind of like, I kind of model a little bit how I attack, uh, attack, uh, approach things, attack, approach things kind of like they do. And a little bit like Chris Stuckman, who, you know, who's like the best to me and still is allowed to be himself. But they all still kind of, they just, they still keep it to the movie. They don't bring themselves in here. They don't suddenly go and say, well, you know, hey, I want to tell you about this thing about personally my life too much. Stuckman does occasionally bring up some personal stuff, but not, you know, not too much, you know. They, they all hold back. We all hold back. We all have to hold back, I guess, in some ways. But one thing about 2020 that's everybody's basically been staying away from is being too topical when it comes to politics, keeping their politics out of things, and really riding a very fine line when it comes to race relations and all that that's going on in the Black Lives Matter movement and COVID-19. I mean, mostly COVID-19 stuff, people parody. And all year long, it's, you know, you've got the Night, you know, the late night talk show people like joke after joke after joke about Trump or COVID and all this stuff and making people like laugh and, and, and trying to bring some kind of levity to the whole thing. But as this year has gone on, and I think I'm not alone in this, that I don't find anything funny anymore about a lot of this stuff. The jokes about COVID, the jokes about Trump. And, and by that, I mean, it gets us nowhere. To me, I don't feel any better hearing a, a, a Trump joke for the millionth time 
no matter how true it is. Because it just, this is serious shit now. It is September. So many states are still in dire, dire, dire straits when it comes to COVID. Even here, it's not over. We have a lot more freedom. Like I said, I got to go skydiving in July. But we, it's not just COVID killing hundreds and, and thousands of people. I said hundreds and thousands, so if anybody says not hundreds of thousands, the total is of over 100,000, but it's killing thousands of people and it's going to get worse. And I don't think it's a fun, you know, like most people are staying away from, there's no comedy there, but like the, the whole mask debate, I, I that's one place I think a lot of people have been fine with touching is put on a mask, don't be an asshole. It's not hurting you unless you talk to some of the fucking crazy people who think it, it's a conspiracy and all this other shit. And then you have the, the all the just the during all of this you have the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and other people. Now most recently Jacob Blake out in Kenosha. I used to live I used to go to live right near there uh, in Racine. And I, I, I've been to Kenosha a lot. I used to go to Kenosha a lot. We used to call it Kenowhere. But we also used to call Racine racist Racine. There's a, there's a trend going here when it comes to Wisconsin. And now Kenosha is going to be known as home of the violent femmes and cops who shoot you in the back seven times. And doing reviews for Lovecraft Country that's dealing with Jim Crow laws and seeing all, and, and this horror show mixed with this just horrifying racism. And the response has been growing and, and I've loved everybody's comments. I really appreciate it. There was one in particular though that really hit, hit me. And it's one of the things we're going to talk about, one of the two main things we're going to talk about here is about the systemic racism in this country. This commenter said, um, you know, I, I kind of said in my review that it, it's been a lot, it's been a hard to take sometimes watching that show and dealing with all the racist parts. And it wasn't, I, I kind of came off, I guess it might have to a few people that I could, you know, like I just didn't want to face it. But the thing is, is I can't, I can take it, I can swallow, I can deal with it. But what it finally made me realize was because some, they were basically kind of saying, um, you know, this is kind of how, when you're experiencing these feelings, you know, it's like you're, you're letting it in. You're seeing what it feels like to be inundated with having people be racist towards you or feeling like people are racist towards you all the time. And when I really took that to heart, I realized that I had never really thought about it, that what I was feeling was what, and I was, I was allowing myself to see what it would, what it feels like to be a person of color in this country 24 seven. that I get the privilege of waking up and not being fearful wherever you go. I know that I get in my car, that unless I get into a car accident or something, wherever I go, I'm relatively going to be fine. I can do whatever I want without anybody looking at me sideways, looking at me with suspicion, looking at me with fear. The fear thing really bugs me. The fear thing really bugs me. When you see these white people talking about fear, they're afraid, they're afraid of what? They're, they act, these people act, and I do believe it's just a mental act that they're putting on, that they're really in danger of anybody. 
all anybody really wants to me in this world is the the the, the right to just be left alone and and to, and to have the right to seek your own happiness in your own corner of this world where you can just be left alone in peace and everybody everybody should have it everybody should find their own be able to find their own little corner of the world and make it their own and be able to live in relative peace and harmony as much as anyone can you know any kind of happiness it's all fleeting it's all whatever everyone deserves that right and i and not enough not everyone in this country gets gets to have that and that's not acceptable anymore when i realized that every day an african american can just be killed for being an african american wherever they go if they walk down the wrong street they get pulled over by the wrong guy they walk into the wrong store they meet the wrong person any of them and it's not just you know it's not just african americans it's latinos and all minorities here in this country and it's not just restricted to america but we're talking about america right now i was at work today and wearing the mask um i i walked past three african american women one was a kid and you can't see a smile behind a mask so i try to you know you try to soften your into a smile like you try to make a smile come out of your eyes like but you know that doesn't just that doesn't always translate a smile and when they when they looked at me i understood that there's a there's a level of mistrust there that they look at you and they just not all the time not everyone but I can see and I understand why they would be there that they're untrustworthy of white people and especially right now it's never been great but it's really bad now really really i don't in my lifetime it is never worse or at least i'm maybe it's just because i'm finally waking up to it more and more they couldn't get out or get get out of there fast enough it, it, it maybe it was nothing to do with me but it sure did feel like you know like as soon as i looked at them they were like come on let's go like i was possibly you know eyeballing them because i've got the word manager on my shirt and maybe i think something that i don't but you know, I, I tried to smile, but, you know, you, like I said, you can't tell a smile through a mask. And it, that bothered me because I wanted to just be able to take my mask off and say, I'm smiling. I, I don't, I want to say hi to you. I want to, you know, like, how are you doing? Do you need any help in the store? You know? But I get it. And the more and more that this, this year goes on, the more and more we have to make the changes that need to happen. They have to happen now. No more of this silly bullshit. Letting these people go on national TV who pulled guns on people protesting in their neighborhood. Be heroes on television. Talking about the destruction of suburbia. These fucking white pieces of shit allowed us to, to just be racist on television openly and they're encouraged by the biggest racist of them all right now the fucking commander in chief of this country if you want to call him that and that's where we're getting to our other topic because i haven't said really you know you could probably you know read between the lines maybe but we have a person in charge and it's not anything new but I'm saying it I want to say it out loud because I'm sick and tired of not taking a stand on things and not putting my voice out there and saying I know this is not right we can't do this any longer because the entire country is about to explode and it might still 
but we have someone in there who does not care about black people or Mexicans or anybody. He doesn't give a shit about me either. Let me put it to you. He doesn't give a shit about anyone in this country. Not one single person. Not even the people who follow him. He is up there putting on a con to all these suckers. That he'll say anything that he has to to win over the simpletons of this country. Who will eat it up with a fucking spoon and ask for goddamn more. Because they, for all different reasons. I hate the Democrats. I don't like the people of color. I don't want them taking away my guns. They took their jobs. You know, there was a saying a long time ago, right? Didn't it? Wasn't it somebody said that the South will rise again? And I think it's happening. And it's all over the country, unfortunately. It's not just the South. It's open racism. And it's been allowed by a president who does not care about anyone but his own power, his own... I don't even think he cares about his children, right? They're props. They're all props. They're all... Everybody is his puppet on a... Puppets on a string. And the Republican Party somehow has no one, no one to put up against this guy. I'm not a Democrat. And I'm not a Republican. I'm just a human being. And when I see something that's wrong, I, I, I have to say something about it. And I haven't. I don't really... I don't have a thousand percent belief in Joe Biden. I have a lot more faith in Kamala Harris. And the younger people that are coming up. And the people that you can tell want real change in this country to help everyone and people of color included. But we're not going to do it with this person allowed to run rampant, unchecked, allowed to lie every single second of his fucking life. He's allowed to lie with impunity. He's allowed to try to just, it's like, and this is silly, right? It's a silly analogy, but every time I, I hear him talk to somebody, it's like duck season, wabbit season, duck season, wabbit season, wabbit season, duck season, bam! Like, he, you know, he's playing stupid reverse psychology where he just, I'm saying that I'm not a fascist, they're fascists. Always claiming that somebody else is doing the thing that he is doing. And no one does anything. Not one freaking thing does anyone do anything about it. All we do is joke or talk about how... Oh my God, I can't believe he keeps saying this. I can't believe the guy has 82 million fucking followers on Twitter. Everybody hanging on his word. Every word of this son of a bitch. I have, n I have never followed him. I don't have to. When you get 82 million people, somehow his tweets are still going to find your feed. Or somebody's going to retweet some stupid thing that he said. That's one of my problems. Is when you when you when you see when he wakes up every morning and sees eighty two million or however many it is now, him that's a victory. Eighty two million people are hanging on his every word and it gives him even more desire for power. Almost like permission. Because he will burn this whole world down and he will not think twice about it. And when the dust clears, and if he gets reelected, and in four more years, if he doesn't try to increase the many the terms he could have, 
he will walk out of the White House eventually like a dapper little gentleman, like, see ya, ha ha ha, fuck you guys, everything's on fire, you're all without jobs, we're at war with who knows who, what, will we even be a superpower then? The world is watching us right now. The world is watching us right now. And if they're not laughing, they're cringing. We're banned everywhere because of his mishandling of COVID. And again, it, nothing is his fault. He, when broached with the subject of the 17-year-old little Illinois fucky fucking piece of shit that went up to Kenosha and shot two people and was allowed to walk right past the cops with a fucking assault rifle attached to his shoulders. And he, they ask him about it, and he makes that guy sound like he was the one. He sounded like he was in danger. Oh. When he can't condemn white nationalists. When he just sits by and just lets everything burn and blames everyone else. While militia are allowed to go and shoot people on the street and, and remove them from the street. But there's nothing wrong with the cops. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing. It's everyone else. It is like the worst. He's like the worst magician in the world. And everybody is still buying it. He's like a fucking kid's magician at a birthday party from hell. And everybody still keeps, the, the idiots in his crowd just keep buying the trick. They can see the, 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 the rabbit get pulled from under the table through the hat and they still go, whoa, look at that, we did it. It's a, it's a war against brains in this country. It's a war against intelligence. There, are, there is so much stupid going on. Stupid, 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 and evil we are surrounded by stupid, evil people. People that look just like everybody else. Here, where I live, it's a little more clear. I'm surrounded by racism here. This is Illinois. This is Illinois, and I am surrounded by racists in this town that I live in. Hillary Clinton might have won Illinois, but not the town that I live in. Or the surrounding couple of towns. My area is like three small towns kind of right on the same road. Boom, boom, boom in a row. And they're all fairly racist. I'd say about 8,000 people total between all three cities. And I'd say about 65, 70% of that is racist. It's gotten so bad that when I see people wearing MAGA hats or whatever at where I work, I walk away from wherever they are so that if they need any help, I don't have to give it to them because I'm this close to getting myself in real trouble <laughs> because I, I, I am at the point where I want to just be openly hostile to people that reject change and, and embrace ignorance and hate and evil. And I do mean evil. When people say they had evil intent, you know, that kind of thing. Evil is not just Hitler. You don't have to just say, oh, he's like Hitler, or he's like Mussolini, or he's like Saddam Hussein, or whoever. Evil can be just the intent that people have with, for each other. And there's so much of it. There's just so much of it. We're drowning in it. And so many people I know, we are all, we are all drowning. We are drowning in, in, in this misery that we don't know how to get out of. And we don't know how to get to November fast enough. Everybody keeps talking about, when can we vote early? I plan on voting early my little one vote against Trump will drown in a sea of ballots of for Trump hoping that this 
area that I live in is more of an anomaly than the majority of the state I live in. Because if we don't get rid of him, there will be blood in the streets and it will just get worse. And no one will be safe. No one will eventually be safe from it. Because if we've just given him, he's just been given permission then, by then, at that point. And I want, even, even if, as I, John Oliver was saying last night on his show, that even if Biden wins, it doesn't mean that this is over. What we're feeling, what we're going through right now, doesn't mean it's over, especially with Black Lives Matter and COVID-19. It means that the fight, we just won a battle. We didn't win the war. And that we're going to have to fight for every single inch to get everybody the rights they deserve. To save the post office, for God's sake. Having to say, do we have to save the post office? And then we got to save everybody from COVID. And then we, and still, we are divided when it should be the simplest thing. It should be the easiest thing in the world to just choose love over hate, to choose love over ignorance, to choose love over stupidity. I'm not perfect. I don't like everybody. In fact, the majority of the people I run into where I live, I just, I'd rather not speak most of the time. Which is one of the reasons why I love having a channel where I can talk to people with, you know, some brains. Because I'm surrounded by ignorance and hate and racism and it just makes everything else that much worse every day. Having to suck it all down. I don't know how many ever, how many hundreds of thousands, millions of us out there are choking down our own rage at people that are blinded by all of this. That some people will probably just vote against things out of spite. You don't have to like the Democratic Party. You don't even necessarily have to like Joe Biden. But if you're telling me that that buffoon who has no respect for the presidency or being presidential actually has your best interests at heart, actually is going to do something for you. What has he done for anybody in these four years, really? Other than he made it open season for racism to just come Blasting out everywhere, spilling everywhere. And whose blood's on the ground? People of color's blood is on the ground. And like Doc Rivers was saying, we've got all these people, these, these people of color who love this country that does not love them back. How long, how long are, you, are, are they supposed to take this? I'm surprised that it hasn't exploded already. That it, it, it shows the infinite patience that a people can have. I mean, really, really. That they just keep struggling while we just bitch about the stupidest shit. I was thinking about how I was complaining about my camera. Oh, these are my problems. Oh, my camera's not good. My videos don't look perfect. Oh. Meanwhile, Jacob Blake is getting shot seven times in the back. I don't care if he was a perfect person. Nobody deserves to get shot seven times in the back. Like that. George Floyd, whatever kind of person he was, doesn't deserve to get murdered on the street. Breonna Taylor sure didn't deserve to have police come into her home and blow her away. 
in her own home. And what does this president do around all of that? He blames everybody else. He stokes more fear. He makes these idiots feel more fearful. And the wall around the White House is more effective than the one he keeps claiming he's going to finish. Fuck Trump. Down with freaking racism in this country. We might not be able to defeat it all the way, but we need to send those rats back into their holes. And hopefully we can burn them out when they're in there. Because this has to stop. We have to be better than this. Hate is taught. It is not built into someone genetically. I'm sorry for going on this long and I hope my wheels weren't spinning too much. But I had to take a stand somewhere before it's too late. Before maybe we don't get to. Because when you look at all the signs of fascism coming up, we could be headed right for it. Where democracy is gone and we and it just will be a memory. And will we even you know, will we even be able to if if if, if this all goes wrong, will we even have these platforms anymore to talk about when they start con- trying to control what we say? Maybe that's an extreme viewpoint. But if I don't stand up and say something now, then I won't ever be able to forgive myself and sit there going, well, so if you agree with what I've said, please share this with as many people as you can, because this isn't about my channel. This is about opening things up and maybe encouraging other people to speak out. And I realize that this is the kind of video that could have the reverse effect and have people making the review making videos that say that that really enable you know embolden them to go the other direction and come right out and be openly racist but then at least they're exposed at least their 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 hate and their ignorance and their racism is exposed and we don't have they they we don't have to we'll know who they are and what they are i'm not a political person. I'm not an overly patriotic person. But like I said, I know right from wrong. And I haven't always been perfect and I'm trying to be better every day. But we have to get better at all of this so that everyone in this country can go to sleep at night and wake up the next morning and not be fearful of taking a trip to the store or whatever. To know that they, wherever you go, you don't have to like, like happens in, uh, you know, in the, well, what we're, what I'm seeing on, in Lovecraft Country in the, in the movie Green Book, right? Where they had a whole atlas of the safe places African Americans can go. Are we going to have to make those again? Are they still, maybe they are still making them, especially if you go to the deep south, I don't know. Before I go on too much longer, because I realize I'm almost 35 minutes and I wasn't paying attention at the time until just now. I'm exhausted. I know a lot of you are too. We're weary and we might have a longer fight ahead of us. We will have a longer fight ahead of us. I shouldn't even say it like it's a maybe. Even if, like I said, even if we get that out of the White House, it's still going to be a fight to make sure that everybody gets what they need in this country, starting with African Americans and other minorities who are being stamped with their, somebody on, you know, somebody's foot on their throat. The danger of just being shot down in the street like dogs. I hope this didn't turn too many people off, but if it did, 
I want you guys to know, all of you out there that are struggling, everyone, people of color, white, brown, purple, I'm, I'm pulling for everyone to get out of this. Everyone. And we need to really pull together. We really need to stop fighting each other and worrying about all the little details about things and do what is important. This is Robert Smirk and Gun Review saying have a great day. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for listening. Good night.